Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at the Stanford HPC conference, and I'm here with Galad Shainer from the Infiniban Trade Association. Galad, you know, you work in a number of capacities, including this HPC Advisory Council. But uh, first, I want to ask you about what is the IBTA and what's it for? Well, the IBTA, it's a consortium that was established in order to, in the beginning, to create a specification for Infiniban. Uh, a standard network, as we all know, that powers some of the largest supercomputers in the world and the leading AI infrastructures as well. Uh, several years ago, IBT also took on themselves to create standardization for Rocky. So actually, uh, everything RDMA is being uh, specified within the IBT organization. Okay, okay. Well, we're coming soon onto this age of Exascale. Two, three years from now, we're going to have Exascale machines, and now they're bringing in AI into the mix. Glad, can you tell me, how does InfiniBand help with these giant Exascale machines? Yeah, so InfiniBand was born, you know, in 1999. It's basically the ultimate software-defined network before people knew what SDN is, in that sense. Yeah. And because it was born as a technology that enables to configure everything in a high flexible way, InfiniBand enables to build any sort of infrastructure at any size with the same simple building blocks. So it, it provides the best performance in the sense of lowest latency, high bandwidth, and flexibility to build different kind of topologies that can meet different requirements for different workloads. And as well, uh, to enable adding more and more acceleration engines into the fabric in a very simple way mm -hmm. that you cannot do in other networks. Now, in the recent years, there was a lot of effort to start bringing in-network computing mm -hmm. capabilities into InfiniBand, yeah. which actually enables to analyze data wherever the data is, right? Yeah. If you look on where we live today, which is the world of data, and definitely impact the HPC simulations and the complexity of things that we can um, simulate and analyze, um, in order to, to make it effective and in order to solve the big problems, you cannot continue and, and drive data to the compute, right? It doesn't work anymore. You hit performance bottlenecks, it's become too expensive to do that, uh, that sort of things. And in the years, years, recent years, we're moving to more data-centric architecture in the data center, which means you want to move compute to the data. And as part of that move, InfiniBand, because of the flexibility of the architecture, enabled to bring acceleration engines that help to analyze the data wherever the data is. Now, that results in enabling much better performance, uh, overcoming performance bottlenecks, and enabling to achieve much better performance for both high-performance computing and AI workloads which, you know, both of them are actually share the same requirements. So in the specific area of AI, how is InfiniBan helping? It seems like these are very data uh, intensive kinds of applications. Are you computing the data where it is versus moving it back to a central source? Is that the idea? Correct. Well, there's, I think there are three or four main things that you need to achieve in order to um, be able to, to run those AI workloads or, or to create they are algorithms that you can use to uh, find better insights in the information that you collect. First one is throughput. You know, you need the biggest pipes in order to move those uh, giant amount of data in order to uh, create those AI uh, software algorithms. That's one thing. Latency is important because you need to drive things faster. RDMA is one of the key technology that enables to uh, increase the efficiency of moving data, reducing CPU overhead. And by the way, nowadays, all of the AI frameworks that exist out there supports RDMA um, as a default element within the framework itself. And the last part, which will becoming very, very critical, is the technology that's called SHARP, which is Scalable Iraqi Curl Aggregation and Reduction Protocol. Sharp is part of the in-network computing capabilities. It's, it's a technology that actually enables to analyze data wherever the data is. And what Sharp does, in a very simple description, it enables to do data aggregation or data reduction on the network level instead of moving the data all the way to the endpoint before you can do that operation. And Sharp enables to reduce latencies dramatically. So if a data aggregation process that takes 
tens of microseconds, or even get closer to hundreds of microseconds, by doing by with running that on on the software side or on the CPU side, you can actually reduce that time to four microseconds when you run it on the network. So that's a dramatic reduction of uh, of time, and even even more than that, um, AI or um, distributed deep learning uh, frameworks, it's all about of data reduction. Data reduction is the main part of it. And today, the frameworks are using element or entity that's called parameter servers that does that work. And actually, by bringing Sharp into the network, it replaces a lot of servers. By doing the same aggregation uh, element within the network, and doing that much, much faster. So we start uh, doing some uh, first testing on running TensorFlow, for example, utilizing the Sharp capability. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing 20 and above percent of performance improvement for those AI workloads. Well, Claude, it's exciting to see this come together and uh, looking forward to seeing Exascale AI coming in the near future. Well, you know, there is a lot of activity now in, in the world. I think that the HPC market is uh, fueled by the rest to Exascale worldwide. Um, and InfiniBand is, is actually one of the leading uh, network options toward Exascale. You know, I'll give you one example. Yeah. Uh, the recent InfiniBand technology out there is a HDR InfiniBand yeah. that drives 200 gigabit per second. Mm -hmm. And because, because it's flexible, you can d build different kind of topologies, you actually set yourself or make yourself ready toward the Exascale. So today, if you're taking the HDR technology, we just three hops between switch infrastructures. You can build uh, um, compute data centers that can go uh, with just those three hops uh, to connect more than 160,000 endpoints, right? Um, and then if you look on the next generation, the up upcoming generation of InfiniBand, which is NDR InfiniBand, that yeah. will enable you to go 400 gigabit per second per port, yeah. that will enable to connect more than a million endpoints with just three switch ops connections, right? So it's, it's a technology that enables all the large supercomputers of today, and that's the best technology that's going to enable the exascale generation.